the number one habit is actually not a habit at all. It is a belief that leads to a habit. And, and that belief is that the number one thing in your life is your rate of growth. You should believe that the most important thing in your life is not your family, it's not your business, it's not your money, it's how fast are you evolving and growing. And so we are seeing that happiness doesn't just make us feel good, it's rocket fuel for productivity, it's rocket fuel for people like you and me that want to go out and do big things in the world. You never stop dreaming of the next level and the next level and the next level. And I did the same. Consciousness is what we need to teach people. So I'm like, what exactly do you mean? And he goes, let me explain it to you. Consciousness means this, that you are a soul having a human experience and what your soul craves is growth more than anything else. You think your business matters. You think your marriage matters. You think your children matter. But let's just talk about business. Your business doesn't matter. If your business makes a million billion dollars, who cares? If your business fails, who cares? What matters is, did you grow? Your business is nothing more than one of the most powerful vehicles for your personal growth. Your quest in life is to grow and grow and grow. Now, if this becomes your belief, all your habits align with this belief. Are you making time in your day to improve yourself? Are you making time in your day to read, to study, to watch Impact Theory, to do a Mind Valley quest? Are you making time to meditate because that helps you grow, to exercise because that helps you grow? And this is what people forget. We get stuck on this bullshit hamster wheel, chasing the dollars, trying to grow in our career, when we forget that none of that shit matters. It's all about us as a multidimensional human being, and are we growing? Tony Robbins said there are, there are several sp uh, human needs, but the two most important human needs, he, he talks about six, but the two most important, he says, is the need for growth and the need for contribution. Mm. Okay, now, trying to contribute without growth is, is, is like walking backwards. It doesn't make sense. If you're growing and you're becoming the best possible human being you can be, that is often the path to contribution. If you're growing, the skills that you're growing within, whether growing as an entrepreneur, growing in terms of your health and wellness, growing your cognition ability, that is going to give you the tools to go out there and contribute. So if growth and contribution are the pathway to fulfillment, growth is that accelerator. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's important. Meditation. I was Googling online for answers. I was trying to figure out why my life sucks so bad. And that practice of meditation that I learned completely shifted me. I had a job at that point, really low level. In four months, I went from low level, entry level to vice president of sales because I was just so good at my job as I started bringing in these protocols that I was learning from meditation. Protocols such as being able to be really peaceful and zen, it's called equanimity, during stress so you can focus better. Being able to increase your levels of creativity so you have better ideation. Being able to visualize your goals and then move towards them. But these are six practices. They are called psycho-spiritual transcendent techniques. Psycho, because many of them are rooted in psychology. Spirituality, because many of them do have a spiritual ideology to it as well. Not religious, spirituality. Again, big difference. Define the difference for me. We'll come to that. And then transcendent, because you're going within. You're disconnecting from the outside world. You're going within and everything is running in your head. Okay, now these six practices have been proven by science to create a massive positive impact in your life. Um, the first one has to do with compassion. The second one have to, has to do with happiness. The third has to do with forgiveness. Now these three constitute your emotions in the present. But in today's world, it's not just enough to be blissful in the present. We gotta go out there. We, we wanna build companies. We wanna change the world. We wanna create revolutions. So the next four phases, four, five, and six, are about that. They're about creating, they're about action. Phase four is about seeing a goal of yours that's three years out and, and getting yourself energized for that goal. Phase five is about organizing and commanding the perfect, most productive day for yourself, all in your mind. And phase six is where you connect this with, with whatever is your spiritual or religious belief or your personal belief, you ask for a blessing. Gratitude, according to science, is the human characteristic most widely associated with well-being. That means if there's one quality that you can adopt that is proven scientifically 
to produce overall well-being, it's this, it's gratitude. Do we know why? There are different theories, but, but here's what we know. We know that when you can elevate your levels of happiness, you perform better at work. Your health improves, your peace of mind improves, you sleep better. Just, just the work benefits are really startling. Sean Aker of Harvard University wrote a book called The Happiness Advantage, and this book is, is, is really good. He speaks about how studies on, on gratitude and happiness show that when we're happy, we do so much better at everything. Doctors are 19% better at diagnoses. Salespeople are 55% better at closing sales. And then there's the whole study of emotions. Uh, the study specifically, they measure your emotional states using a concept called PQ or positivity quotient. So PQ is your ratio of good thoughts to overall thoughts, right? The more positive you are, the higher your PQ. Our brains perform better when the right chemicals are being released serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin. The practice of gratitude releases the right chemicals. You're building your business based on the quality of your brain. If your brain is in a healthy state, you're better able to get access into states of focus, states of flow, states of creativity, states of, um, where, states of cognition where your processing speed is, is better. And gratitude is one of those ways to optimize your thinking, optimize your brain. Ultimately, you're building your business with your brain. And I think that's why it works. That's why so many studies show that we do our work best when we are happiest. Mm. I think why it's important. So visualization is important if you do it at a particular brainwave state. So if you're visualizing at the waking state, which is beta, now this is measured through a device called an EEG. It means an electroencephalograph. It means your brain is beating at around uh, 14 to 21 cycles per second. I don't know if it's effective. The studies that show it's effective show that it works when you're doing it at a relaxed state. And that's why you do it when you meditate, mm. right? So visualization does two things. One, it actually affects your biology. And two, it actually affects your performance. So again, let's talk about studies. Uh, there've been numerous studies that show that visualizing yourself getting better, healing, can actually help increase your, your rate of healing. The more you can feel, the better. So in fact, I believe it's all about feeling, right? Because it's not about what you see. Someone who is born blind can still practice this. It's about what you feel. So let's say you it's want really you want to build your business. Your business is at one million in revenue. Mm -hmm. You want to get it up to ten million in revenue. You visualize that. You visualize how would you dress? How would you feel? What would your office look like? How would you treat people? What would your day go like? And it, and I'm not saying you're creating magic that's making this happen. I'm saying you're conditioning your brain to believe. I can do this. And you're conditioning yourself to take on the right feelings, the right behaviors that then show up in your life. Mm. The more you take on these behaviors, the more you start believing something is possible, that's gonna give you the impetus to actually get there. You're visualizing your skin getting better and it's a particular modality and you're doing it at a relaxed level of mind, the alpha brainwave frequency, three times a day. Each visualization session takes three minutes. So I had five years of bad skin. It started at 13. Now I was 17 years old, five years of bad skin. And I did this Silva methodology. In five weeks, my skin healed. So again, the protocol was three minutes a day, three times a day, so nine minutes total. In five weeks, my skin healed. My pimples disappeared. Armed with that, I was like, wow, this stuff is awesome. What else can I do? For each of these dimensions, you understand your beliefs. What do I believe about love? What do I believe about my body? You understand your why. Why do you want to get healthy? Why do you want to be a father? You understand your vision. What does a family look like to you? What does a business look like to you in intricate detail? And then you develop your strategy. How do you get there? Now, once you have this as a base, our AI analyzes this. And as our AI analyzes this, we start creating a custom education from you. We have 61 of the world's greatest teachers and everything from building a business to leadership, to meditation, to, um, to developing a monk-like brain, to speed reading, that's Jim Quick. So many of these teachers you've had on the show, to parenting, Dr. Shafali, to self-esteem, Marissa Peer. And all of this education is customized for you. 
We're building an education that's customized to your vision of who you want to be, not some official curriculum. Most life-changing practices probably have been, have been so many, because I study everything. In fact, starting tomorrow, I go on two different retreats just to learn about being human, right?